the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, and verse 27. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, and verse 27. The text reads, And Jesus looking up upon them, and says, With men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. Praise God. Let me read that one more time. I want you to let this sit down in your ears. Again, the text reads, And Jesus looking upon them said, With men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ, Yahshua, the Mashiach, of Israel. We thank you for allowing us to sit at your table and break the bread of life. Your word is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our pathway. Open up our understanding and impart your divine truth within our inward parts that we might receive the revelation of God that brings a transformation within our lives. And we will praise you. Somebody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Again, we're coming out of the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, beginning at verse number 27. Praise God. The text says, with men, it is impossible. Now, why is that? Why is it that with men, it is impossible? Because man is a finite being. He is limited in power. Praise God. He can only do so much. His wisdom only goes so far. But Jesus Christ, the Son of God, begins to say, he said, for with God, all things are possible. Now, why is that? Because God is infinite. He's unlimited. The Apostle Paul calls him the only wise God. He's not only omnipresent, he's not only omniscient, but he's omnipotent. Amen. He has all power, all wisdom, and he's everywhere present at the same time. Amen. So when you take heed to the scriptures, again it says, with men it is impossible. This is why you should not put your trust in man. Amen. Because man can only do so much for you. Amen. Man is a man is limited in his resources. He's limited in strength. He can only do so much for you. Praise God. And this is why the psalmist teaches us in Psalms chapter 118. He said, put not your trust in man. Don't put your confidence in the flesh. But we're to trust in the Lord our God. For with God, all things are possible. Amen. 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 And this is why it's important to have faith in God. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. But he that cometh to God and believeth that he is, he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Amen. Our God is infinite. He's unlimited. He can do anything. Praise God. It is recorded in Genesis where someone asked the question, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Well, I come to tell you that God can do all things. Hallelujah. Because he's infinite. He is unlimited in power. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Glory to God. But again, he teaches us in this text, he says, with God. Now, I want you to get that now. I really want you to understand what Jesus Christ, Yahshua, the Mashiach of Israel, is declaring in this text. He said, with God, all things are possible. Amen. That is the key word right there. With God. Are you listening to me? Amen. Amen. 
Let's just do some precept upon precept. And let's just look at a few scriptures here because we need to understand that with God, all things are possible. Look at the Gospel of John chapter 3 and the words that are recorded by Nicodemus. Praise God. Praise God. The Gospel of John chapter 3 beginning in verse 1, it records there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. A ruler of the Jews, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Amen. Look at that. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. Now, what did the foundational text record? Jesus said, with God, all things are possible. Now you can understand why uh, uh, Nicodemus asked this question. He knew that Jesus Christ of Nazareth could not have done any of what the things that he did on his own. Remember, Jesus recorded over in the gospel of John chapter 14. He said, the works that I do, he said, he said the Father that dwelleth in me, it is he that's doing the work. Amen. Amen. Because God was with him. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. Glory to God. And I think we need to really understand that because we can read this on the surface. But then when we go a little deeper within the scriptures, you can see that it's more to it than just reading in, in the pages of scripture. In Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good and healing all that was oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Praise God. Again, we see the text references how God was with him. With God, all things are possible. Amen. Amen. You can't cast out the devil without the power of God in your life. You can't do anything with the forces of darkness unless you seek God in prayer so that he can elevate your faith and help you kill that flesh so the power of the anointing can flow freely without any interference in your life. And this is how Jesus was able to move in the miraculous the way that he did. Amen. You don't believe that. Let's look at the Gospel of Luke chapter 4. The Gospel of Luke chapter 4. Because I think we really need to understand that it's more than reading this within the pages of Scripture. God the Father desires that every one of his children flow in the same power and anointing as his only begotten Son. Amen. But if that's going to happen, something is going to have to take place first. First of all, understand this principle. In the Gospel of Luke chapter 4, let's look at verse 1. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Now every child of God that names the name of Jesus Christ must understand that you must be full of the Holy Ghost first. But now that you're full of the Holy Ghost, you got to kill that flesh. Because if the flesh is not overcome, if demons are not overcome, if this world is not overcome, then you're not going to have power with God. Hello? Amen. You'll never have power with God until you overcome your own flesh, the temptations of the enemy, as well as this wicked world. Praise God. Amen. 
And in those days he didn't eat nothing. And when they were in it, he afterward hungered. Now here come the devil. And he said unto him, if thou be the son of God, command that this stone that it be made bread. Now understand, when you're reading this text, this is not just words that, you, that are recorded in the book. This is serious warfare that is taking place. The scripture says in verse 2 that Jesus was yet hungry. And the, and the devil began to tempt him to turn that stone into bread. You got to remember, amen, he was on a 40-day fast in the wilderness. And it was a purpose why the Spirit of God led him into that place. Come on. Because he had to overcome the flesh, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. If he was going to have Now, folks, you got to get into the pages of Scripture because this is a serious warfare that is taking place. Amen. I mean, the Scripture teaches us how Jesus was yet hungry and the enemy was tempting him. Praise God. And you know how it is when you on the fast and you get tempted. Hallelujah. Some people get weak in the knees and they ain't been fasting for about three hours. And he had not eaten anything. Right. Amen. Huh? Amen. And when they were in it, the enemy began to tempt him because he was hungry. Amen. And Jesus began to fight him off with the word of God. Amen. And the devil taking him up to a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, and all this power will I give thee, and the glory of them for it is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I will give it. And if thou wilt wor worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Amen. And he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against the stone. And Jesus answered and said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. In other words, the devil got whooped. He got whooped.
tongues. Hello. Amen. Glory to God. The text said in verse 14 that Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogue, being glorified of all. Amen. Praise God. Praise Are you listening to me? Amen. I'm trying to show you something. Amen. Because with God, all things are possible. Amen. You can't do these things without God. Why do you think people struggle like they do? Yeah. Because they're attempting to do many things without God. Yeah. They're attempting to lay hands on people without God. Yeah. Hello? Amen. They're trying to pray him without his anointing. Are you listening? This is why some people can only praise him for two seconds. And you can see them dying out that quick. Because they lack the oil of joy on their life. See, without God, you will always come short. Hello? Amen. Amen. Without God, you will always come short. And many always seem to try to do everything without God. And they think because they mention his name, or well, they'll just say that God is with them. Praise God. Then they actually believe that God is with them. They actually believe they're anointed. When they don't understand what the anointing is, and neither do they understand what we must do if we're going to have power with God. Hello, somebody. You're going to go through some things. Amen. You're going to go through some things. How is it that Jesus encountered this great warfare and overcome the enemy? He subdued his flesh. He rejected the world. Now the scripture says when he went in the wilderness, he was full of the Holy Ghost. But when he came out, he was in the power. Now he can operate in the kingdom of God. Come on, 
on to tell us in verse 24. And Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Now here we see a picture of, of Jacob wrestling with an angel. And in turn, he's really, amen, travailing in prayer before God. Hallelujah. We see a picture of him getting a hold of him and not letting him go. See, that's what we got to do. You got to get a hold of God. I heard an old preacher say one time, if God don't get a hold of you, you better get a hold of him. Come on, somebody. Are you listening to me? And we see that Jacob got a hold to this angel, which we know is nothing more but one getting in prayer and getting a hold of God. Are you listening to me? And the text says here that when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Praise God. When he touched the hollow of his thigh and his thigh went out of joint, you know, that would have been enough to make him let go. Come on. Because of the pain that he is encountering in his body. But he was more determined to get from God what he needed from him. So you know what? He looked beyond the pain and he saw his purpose. He looked Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. They don't understand the experience that one must endure to have their testimony within their mouth. Come on. I know that makes sense. Amen. Let's look at Genesis chapter 39. Genesis chapter 39. Hallelujah. Now you got to be very careful to just, you know, walk around saying the Lord is with me. You know, that's very common. I've heard sinners say all the time, God is with me. Amen. Back in the day, people would say, you know, they're going to the club and they're taking the Lord with them. Hallelujah. Many say a lot of things out of ignorance. Yeah. They say a lot of things blindly because they really don't have no understanding of Scripture and they have no understanding of the person of Jesus Christ, Yahshua, the Mashiach of Israel. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 39, let's look at verse 1. The text says, And Joseph was brought down to Egypt. Joseph was one of the twelve sons of Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. And the text says, And Joseph was brought down to Egypt. And how many know that Joseph was a righteous man? Amen. Absolutely he was. He was a righteous man. And God showed favor in this man's life. See, I tell, I tell people all the time, living holy comes with benefits. Amen. 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 I know people look at it as a waste of time, but I come to tell you in the name of Jesus Christ, holiness comes with benefits. Amen. Amen. The text said that Joseph was brought down to Egypt and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down hither. Now we understand what happened to Joseph, right? Amen. Praise God. His brothers had did him dirty. Hallelujah. They had did him wrong. But guess what? The scripture is about to show you the hand of God that was in his life. Amen. The text goes on to say in verse number two, and the Lord was with Joseph. Now the Lord wasn't just with Joseph just to be with him. You must understand that Joseph was a righteous man. Amen. Joseph was one who kept the commandments of God. He loved him with all of his heart. Amen. He proved that, didn't he?
is with them. And yet, what do you see? You see ungodliness. You see unbelief. You see everything that contradicts God's word, but yet God is with them. That's not what the scripture says. It has to line up with scripture. Are you hearing me? Praise God. Does that make sense? Hallelujah. Amen. Joseph, the scripture says, God was with him and made him to prosper. See that? We see here that when Jacob overcame his trial when he wrestled with that angel the scripture says the angel said let me go and he wouldn't let him go he said I won't let you go until you bless me Amen. even though he touched the hollow of his thigh and it went out of joint and that's all we read about but you don't understand the pain that he endured the suffering that he was encountering but he held He said, what is thy name? He said, Jacob, your name shall no longer be Jacob or Israel. For as a prince, you now have what? Power Hallelujah. with God. Hallelujah. See, if you don't have power with God, you got to go through something. Amen. First and foremost, you got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And now you got to go through your trials. You got to go through your temptations. You got to go through your wilderness experiences. Come on, sir. It ain't just a scripture you quote. But it's an experience that you must encounter with God. Does that make sense? Glory to his name. How many understand that if you're going to be a child of God, a citizen of the kingdom, you must operate in power. Huh? Is that what he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4? Let's read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Praise God. Praise God. Listen to the text here. Glory to his name. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. The text says, for the kingdom of God is not in word but in power. Look at that. When you are a citizen of the kingdom of God, you're supposed to operate in power. Hallelujah. And if we're going to operate in power, we got to have power with God. Other than that, all we would ever do is speak in tongues and that's it. That's all we would ever do, just speak in tongues. Amen. And we think we've arrived and you have not arrived. You haven't even scratched the surface of what God desires to do in the lives of his people. And it's not about you, it's about him getting the glory out your life. Amen. Come on. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. Amen. Let's look at uh. The Gospel of Mark chapter 16. I want you to get this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Gospel of Mark chapter 16. Listen to the words of God. I want you to know that when you scan the scriptures, this is an example for us to follow. Amen. And what many have, have done is just read scripture and that's it. Right. They didn't understand what they were reading. Jesus left us an example that we should follow his step. That means we have to go through what he went through. We have to encounter what he encountered. If we're going to get to the place that he was, that we may operate in the same power as he did, then we're going to have to have our own experiences. Amen? Amen. Nobody's going to escape that. That is God's method. He never makes it easy. Amen. A good teacher never makes it easy for you. Because you'll never learn like that. You'll never learn. You'll always want everything to be easy. You'll always want the test to be A, B, and C. You don't want no hard questions. You don't have to research. You don't have to buckle down and spend time. You just want everything fed to you. Amen. Like a silver spoon put in your mouth. Right. And that is not how God operates. Praise God. Praise God. In the Gospel of Mark chapter 16, 
It begins to say in verse 15 that he said unto them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He's speaking to his disciples in this particular verse. And then he goes on to say, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Amen? Amen. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Now here's the proof that one has become a true believer. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Because a true believer will become a partaker of the Holy Ghost. Because only through the power of God will you be able to manifest these particular things that the scriptures are going to name. Come on, somebody. Amen. You cannot manifest these characteristics in the flesh. You got to possess the Holy Ghost. Hello, somebody. Amen. Amen. And your life must be coupled with fastings and prayer. Amen. Amen. Again, he says in verse 16, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. And they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord working with them. And confirming the word with signs following. Amen. 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 Did you see that? Amen. Glory to God. And this is how it's supposed to be. This is how it's supposed to be in the house of God. Amen. This is how it's supposed to be among the saints of the Most High. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. Amen. God went with them as they began to preach everywhere. And the scripture says he confirmed his word with what? Signs following. Amen. Amen. What did the text say in verse 20? The Lord working what? With them. See, they go to that word again. The word with means accompanied by or possessing something as a feature. Did you not know God in your life is the main feature? Amen. Ah, let me give you that definition one more time. The word with means accompanied by or possessing something as a feature. God is the main feature in your life that you and I are to work with. And he will work with and through us to bring about his glory in the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You understand that? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You understand? Amen. This is how it is. And we got to get a hold to this. Praise God. Praise God. Because it's, it's more than a bunch of jumping and shouting. It's more than just speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But... It goes a lot farther than many people know. Amen. I like what Nicodemus said, which we all, we've already uh, mentioned this particular verse, how he encountered Jesus. He came to him by night mm -hmm. and said that God, no man can do these miracles except God be with him. There go again. Yeah. It's amazing how many today say God is with them, but we don't see those godly characteristics. Amen. Hallelujah. Because a lot of what you hear today is just a bunch of talk. A bunch of religious talk. A bunch of people trying to make you believe that they are a Christian. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the truth is they are far from the truth. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. 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 It is the will of God that we have what? Power with God. Hallelujah. Amen. Do we see that in the scripture? Amen. 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 We see that in the text throughout the pages of God's word. We gave you multiple resources on tonight and we prove this because you must understand this is God's will for his people because the saints of God are supposed to be operating in power. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With God all things are possible. And that's more than a scripture to quote. Because that scripture is quoted much, but it's not manifested in the lives of many that quote it. Amen. Praise God. That is an 
experience that one is to encounter, therefore that God may give them a testimony. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Thank you, Jesus. This is what the scriptures teach on tonight. With God. Tell your neighbor, with God. All things are possible. To him that believe, praise God. Amen. We try to do everything without God. We just say with God, but we're really doing much without God. Laying hands on people without God. Come on, singing without God. You know, many today ain't even anointed, but they sing it without God. Preaching without God. Don't even have the anointing. Ain't even overcome their flesh, but they preaching without God. You think because they, you know, they come with a, a nice little message. Oh, that was good. It may have been good, but uh, much, much of the time it ain't even God because there is no anointing there. Hello, somebody. Amen. Many are preaching without God, singing without God. They went through 
trials and they endured sufferings mm -hmm. whereby God can bring them to that place where they now can have power with him. Amen. Come on. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. You got many today and say, I got the Holy Ghost. And jabber in the tongue, and they can't even control their own tongue. Amen. Huh? Amen. He that keepeth his tongue, keepeth his soul from trouble. Oh, they yeah, can't even God. keep their own tongue. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. Jesus. Come on, they can't even keep their own tongue. Amen. They don't have no power. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Many can't keep their eyes yeah. from lusting. Yeah. And then what Job said, Job said, I have made a covenant with my eyes that I don't lust upon me. Are you talking about the lust of the eye? Amen. You, you got to overcome that. Amen. Because see, temptation is all around. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Temptation is on every corner. Amen. And we have to overcome that. Amen. If a man look at the woman, woman to lust after her, he's committing adultery already in his heart. You got to overcome that. Vice versa, the same with women, because they do it just as much as men do. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. You have to overcome because unless you overcome Satan, your own flesh, and this world, you'll never have power with God. Show me somebody who can't overcome their appetite, and I'll show you somebody who can't cast the devil out. All he would ever do is jabber in tongue, but they ain't got power with God to deal with that devil. Come on, somebody. You better hear me. And this is why he teaches us the principle of fasting and prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because there are lessons to be learned in that. Praise God. Praise God. How many understand? Amen. Amen. How many understand? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. There should not be any weaklings in the house of God. Mm -hmm. huh? Amen. In the book of Daniel the prophet, the Bible says... The people of God should be strong and do exploits. Huh? Ain't going to be no weaklings in the house of God. Amen. 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 The apostle said, be strong in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And in the power of his might. That's not a scripture for you just to quote. Amen. There's something you have to go through right. in order to get to that place where you right. become strong. Come on. Come on. Amen. Amen. You got to be a, a a person of prayer and fasting. You got to pray in the spirit. Come on, God. People got to pray in tongues. Come on. Because that allows the that allows the Holy Ghost to take the word that has been imparted in your heart and begin to strengthen your inner man and build you up in your most holy faith. Come on. And this is why a lot of people are not strong. They're spiritually weak. They can't take nothing, can't go through nothing. It's because they're weak. They're weak in the mind. They're weak in the heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They can't overcome anything. Everything bothers them. They can't overcome the flesh, can't overcome the lust of the eyes or the pride of life. Everything the world is doing, they want to do it too. And then they want to justify it as if God is going to put his stamp of approval on it. How many know if it's not the word of God, it does not have God's stamp of approval? God's word is his stamp of approval. When God sends the fire upon the sacrifice, that is his stamp of approval. Come on, God ain't approving nothing that is not sanctioned in scripture. Your flesh may approve it. You may look for other people to agree with you, to feel justified in it. But if the word of God speaks against it, you'll never have God's stamp of approval. Amen. But he will be your judge. Yeah. He will be your judge. Because he's put his word above all his name. Amen. How many know the word of God is everything? Amen. That's why everything is going down. But the word of God. Amen. Psalms 138 says he's put his word even above his name. See, everything going down but the word. If that ain't the word, it's going down. I don't care how much you like it. I don't care what you agree with. I don't care what you say. If it's contradict God's word, it's going down. Come on. Y'all don't want to hear this, praise God. Hallelujah. It's going down. Because if it doesn't,
doesn't stand the test of scripture, it's going down. Hallelujah. The songwriter said it won't change. The word will remain the same. Hallelujah. It ain't going to change. You know why the word ain't going to change? Because in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And if the word never changes, then God, who is the word, ain't going to ever change. Amen. How many got something out of this? Hallelujah. Power with God. You got to be with God. We do a lot of things without God. We'll just assign God's name to stuff when he's, when he's not even present. Some people say, I'm taking the Lord with me. And ain't taking God nowhere with him. Disobedient. Stubborn, don't listen. But how are you taking God with you? Exactly. How are you taking God to the club with you? Exactly. I used to hear people say that growing up. You know, some of my friends they be going to the club. Somebody say, "Take the Lord with you." They say, "Oh yeah, I'm taking the Lord with me." Because you know they went to church and everything, but they still went to the club too. Right. And they thought they could take God to the club with them. Mm -hmm. And they never really had God in their life. They never really had the holy, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Right. You know, all they had was just. You know, denominational religion. Mm -hmm. Praise, God. Praise God. And that's all because uh, 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 a lack of biblical teaching and education. That's why people are ignorant. And people just say things out of a religious spirit. Well, I'm taking the Lord with me. That's just easy to say. Praise God. But when you look at the scripture, you'll see what it means for God to be with you. Amen. Hmm? Amen. You'll see what that means. Mm -hmm. So you gotta have you gotta have scriptural validation. Yeah. Feelings and emotions don't count in this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we got to have scriptural validation. Boy, it is a farce. It is a counterfeit. It is something we have dreamed up and hope that it's true because we said it. But yet, the scriptures condemn it. Right. Come on, somebody. Amen. With God, all things are possible. That's why a lot of things are not happening. It's because God is not in much of what we do. A lot of people are praying without God. They don't follow his instructions when it comes to prayer. They just pray the way they want to. And yet, you know what? They don't see any results. They never see any results. They never see any results. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. They never see any results because God is not with them. They have forsaken the altar. They have cast his words behind their back and they go about it to try to do it on their own. And then they'll, they'll mention Jesus Christ. They'll say God is with them, but yet they never see any results. Right, right. Amen. You know why? Because he's, he's not there. <laughs> but in the scripture, what do we see? We see the evidence. Mm -hmm. Biblical evidence. Mm -hmm. Come on. Amen. That's why people need to stop being religious. <laughs> Just going through the motions, trying to sound good, trying to look a particular way in front of people because we're trying to get them, you know, to think that we big and we bad and we wonderful and we something. But the Bible said, let no man think he is something when he's nothing. See, without God, you're Nothing. Nothing. Amen. When God is not in your life, you're not saved. It has to be what? With God. Amen. Yes. Come on. Yes. Come on. Amen. And until we get to that place, we're going to always come short. Oh, yeah. We're going to always come short. Yeah. God desires that his people endure their afflictions, oh, yeah. that they overcome their trials. Because as a child of God, he's going to take you through. You know why? Because he has to subdue all that flesh. Exactly. Thank you. Because see, your flesh will keep you. Will keep, your flesh will hinder the anointing from flowing. Amen. 
All you do is sit there speaking tongues all day long. That's all you have to do. But you'll never do no more than that. But God has to eradicate the flesh so that he can have full reign without any what? Interference. The flesh is always what? Interference. Yeah. Yeah. I see people pray for folks and they'll say, oh, they felt better. And then they get to go, what are you going for? First of all, God, God, God ain't interested in just making people feel better. He's interested in people getting healed. Amen. Not feeling better. Amen. He wants them to be healed. Amen. Come on. And you ain't going to walk around gloating because you prayed for them. Hallelujah. You see, you see that flesh in the way? Yeah. You're trying to get some glory. Yeah. Come on. We know right there you ain't walking in the anointing. Because 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says charity, which is the love of God. And the love of God is imparted in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. He said charity never what? Seeks. It's own. Never seeks his own glory. Never. But Jesus said in the Gospel of John 16 and 13, he said, when the Spirit of truth come, he's gone. Glorify me. The Holy Ghost is always going to point you to Christ. Amen. That he might get glory. And when he's getting glory, the Father that's in him is getting glory through the Son. And many people today just sing it in Jesus' name, preach it in Jesus' name, and yet they use it in his name to pump themselves up. They prostituted him for their own selfish intents. They prostitute the scriptures and pimp the people for their own self-interest. See, they're not with God. That's them in the flesh. And God gets no glory out of it. Amen. The spirit of the living God becomes greed over a generation as such. Praise God. Praise God. With God, all things are possible. Hallelujah. Look at that. With God. With God. That's why, that's why, that's, see, with God you'll be able to love. You'll be able to walk in peace Absolutely. and have joy. Amen. Come on. Amen. You understand? Amen. That's when you what? With God. Hallelujah. And God is what? With you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. And God is really going to manifest himself through the lives of his people. The flesh has to be eradicated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't you dare think God going to get glory when that flesh won't die. Mm -hmm. You won't kill it. Come on, you won't starve it. You won't put it to death. He ain't getting no glory. What did he say? In 1 Corinthians, he said, no flesh shall glory in my presence. That flesh got to die, got to be eradicated. Yeah. It got to be extinguished. Yeah. Because God wants us to translate over into the power of the Spirit. Not just having the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues. Satisfied with being born of this again and entering the race. But there's much more. There's much more than that. We can't shortchange ourselves. Because God has more. He has more. And many people get to a certain place and they think this is all it is. Some people have gotten to the place where all they ever done was shout. They think them because they shout. Well, shouting is good, but um, you haven't arrived yet. Nope. There's more. Amen. Huh? Amen. There's more. There's more. Amen. Come on. Amen. There's more. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. And I think the saints of God better understand this because. There's a beast and a false prophet coming. And the Bible said when they come, they're going to come with power. Yeah. Yeah. Lion signs and wonders. Yeah. The saints of God better be walking in power. Because I told you in a previous message, there's an end time showdown coming. And whoever has the most power is going to win. That's right, man. How do you think Moses was able to overcome Janice and Jambres? Yeah. 
Huh? It's an end time showdown coming. Amen. Amen. The saints of God in this end time that endure to the end, they would have had more power with God than the beast, the false prophet who was working miracles and deceiving the whole world. Amen. See, you want to have power. You can't walk around with some, some old flaky Christian, lifeless, no anointing, no godly inspiration or anything, and think you're going to make it. Because Jesus, Jesus said over in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, he said, if the, he said, if the days of the tribulation were not shortened, even the very elect would be deceived. That shows you this end time delusion is going to be so powerful. It's going to be so believable. Every, just about everybody going to be giving in to it. And they're going to be worshiping the beast. Because I told you in a previous message, months and months and months ago, that it's going to take power in this last day. Real Holy Ghost power. Then you wonder why a lot of people are venturing over to New Age religions. Because in their, in their religions, there, there's, a, there's a level of power that's being demonstrated. It's demonic power, but it's some kind of power. They're being lured into it. They're being deceived. But what you got to understand is we, sh we should be showcasing the power of God. Amen. But the devil steps in and shows a level of power and this is why people become so intrigued because this is what they want. They, a lot of them are just deceived to fall into the trap of the enemy. Amen. Amen. And Satan has some power. And many are gravitating to it. And in this end time hour, the whole world is going to gravitate to it. Hmm? Yeah, and that's why if you don't walk in power, you ain't making it. Because you will be deceived. Jesus said it. Now tell Jesus he's alive. He said it. Because this great delusion in his last day is going to be so convincing. People are going to be dropping like flies in the church. It's going to be giving the heat to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. It's already begun and it's going to escalate. And then when the beast and the false prophet come on the scene and they're coming, huh? Amen. You're going to be amazed at what you behold. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We pray that somebody got something from this. Amen. Stand to your feet, lift your hands to the Amen. Lift your hands to the Father. Amen. You, Father. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Yahshua Hamashiach. Hallelujah. Father, your word declare. Hallelujah. And men should always pray and not faint. Amen. Your word declares how this kind goeth out by fasting and prayer. Hallelujah. Father, you're calling your people to a solemn assembly in this end time hour. That we might shut in like a caterpillar. Yes. That we may come out like a butterfly. Amen. Oh God. May the hearts of your people begin to yearn for more of thee. Yes. And Father, unless we begin to hunger and thirst for your righteousness. We will never become a recipient of your grace. Yes. And Father, you have so much for us. Amen. And it's not so much that it's for us, but it's for your glory. Amen. Is that your name may be magnified. Father, raise up a generation of Holy Ghost filled believers that trust in you, that depend on the Word of God, that believe it without compromise, that are not easily deceived, but will stand for righteousness and holiness, not being swayed by the lies of the enemy. Oh, God, raise them up, raise up a remnant. 
in this end time hour. Men and women that won't flinch. They won't be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Uh, whereby the enemy lies in wait to deceive. Lord, I just pray in the name of Jesus, let it be so according to thy word. And may we get a hunger and a thirst for his righteousness. As David said, as my heart panted for the water brook, so panted my soul after thee, O God. Oh, it's time to follow hard after him. Take up your cross, deny yourself, and come after him. Jesus said, if you don't do it, you cannot be my disciple. Father, let your glory rain upon them that are diligently seeking you. Father, confirm your word with signs following that your name may be glorified in the earth, even in this end time hour. And we thank you. And we praise you. And we give you glory in Christ Jesus, the Mashiach. Lord, send a 